Hey there, I'm Ari from Tech Buyers Growing. In this video, I'm going to be going over all the parts you should be buying in spring 2020 to build yourself the best compact gaming PC on the market. It all starts with the case, and that is the Silverstone SG13 that I have right here. I've built this up so many times, I don't care to remember, but the good news is it always delivers a fantastic gaming experience. And even better, the price is just unbelievable at about $50. Yes, there are smaller cases out there on the market today, and yes, they cost five to six times as much, so no, they don't fit in the budget. Go with the SG13, you won't be let down. But there is one thing you need to add to your parts list to make sure that you get the best experience from this case, and th that is the PP08 bracket that I have right here. This bracket fits onto the back of the case and allows you to use a smaller power supply. The mount that comes on the case is for an ATX power supply. You don't wanna put an ATX power supply in this tiny case, it fills like one third the space. That's a terrible idea. Luckily, Silverstone does offer this, ca this case adapter. It's only $10. And what it allows you to do is use a compact SFX power supply like the one I have here, the SX500G that comes in at around $100. It provides a tremendous amount of power in a very small package, which allows you to then expand the airflow in your case. In particular, it allows you to use this fantastic cooler right here, the Noctua NH-L12S. In a shootout that I performed back in 2019, I found that the L12S was far and away the best low profile cooler on the market, and it only fits in this case if you use the PPO8 adapter, so make sure you pick that up. Other really great addition to this case to improve airflow is this 140 millimeter fan. Now here's the trick to using a 140 millimeter fan like this great Bionics model from Arctic. You have to use a small video card. Because of the way that the case is laid out, the video card will go end to end if you use a reference style video card at 10.6 inches. Now it will fit, and I have built this up and featured it on the channel with a 10.6 inch video card, but then you have to use a smaller fan in front. If you wanna use a big fan like this, get a smaller video card, and I recommend the Zotac RTX 2070 Super Mini. It comes in at under nine inches, giving you plenty of space in your case, not only for this bigger fan, but also for cabling. It's really a good solution for a small case like this. Look, I know the trend is to make cases incredibly small and yet fit incredibly big video cards. That's just kind of goofy. That's going the wrong way about it. And I think you should use the smaller video cards that are out there on the market right, right now so you don't have to spend a ton on getting some kind of bespoke case that somehow magically fits giant video cards in a small space. You don't need to do that. Just get the smaller video card and increase your air flow in the case with a nice 140 millimeter fan like this one. Now, of course you need a CPU in your system and I built my system up with a Ryzen 5 3600X, but right now prices have dropped so much on AMD processors that I would go with the 3700X. It's an eight core processor versus the six core that I used when I built up my system a few months ago. It comes in at around $300 and the price just keeps dropping. That is the amazing thing about AMD. They are so competitive on prices, whereas Intel will sit and sit and sit on prices for years, literally, long after a product is completely obsolete. AMD is very competitive and consumer friendly when it comes to prices. So I like the 3700X right now. For the motherboard, I go for the B450 iOrus from Gigabyte. This is a fantastic motherboard. And while I was a little concerned early on that B450s wouldn't support the uh, Zen 2 processors, the Ryzen 3000 series, because they were frankly older than these new CPUs, the motherboards in the retail channel have now been updated and you don't have to worry about having older firmware because these processors came out in July, 2019. So at this point, the motherboards are fresh. They're new in the retail channel. One thing I should mention is that the Gigabyte sells out constantly. I, I think it's probably the most popular ITX motherboard on the market. So I will be posting links down below and if you see a substitute, it's because the B450 iOrus is out of stock, but it's not because I don't like it. I use this in my personal system. I've used this for months and months. It's a fantastic motherboard. Now, I've covered just about everything except for the storage and memory subsystems. Now for memory, I go for Corsair's Vengeance LPX. It's actually the only memory other than Crucial's Sport LT that will fit under the L12S cooler that I have here, but Sport LT has been discontinued by Crucial. So Corsair is the one remaining uh, a, a ma manufactured RAM that I can count on to fit under this L12S cooler. And it's fantastic RAM. Of course, Corsair is number one in terms of um, customer support as well. So there's no problem going with that. For a system like this, I recommend DDR4 3200 and 16 gigabyte allocation. In terms of storage, I do have a little bit of bad news and that is that SSD prices are rising. 
they kind of bottomed out at about $100 for one terabyte drives back in December 2019. They're on the way up. Today, I would recommend the Rocket Q one terabyte from Sabrent for this system. It comes in at about 120, but the price will continue to rise uh, through probably the middle of 2020. So if you're interested in building now and want to save a little bit of money, get your SSD right, right away and maybe save up for some of the other parts later on, um, those SSDs are gonna go up in price. And that's just because of the market for the NAND flash that they use. It's a commodity market and sometimes the supply is cut and then the prices go up and, uh, and vice versa. It's a very dynamic market. And sometimes it's good for consumers and sometimes it's not. But that's, that's the only thing that's really going up in price. Luckily, everything else is going down in price, which is fantastic. So if you have any questions about this build, please post them down below. Like I said, I've been in and out of this case and worked on these coolers, this motherboard so many times, I can't even remember. I can answer any of your questions. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe if you're new here and I will catch you soon.